unprecedented size with the declaration that the whole Nazi apparatus of repression and aggression would be indicted as criminal as well, including the Nazi party leadership, the high command, the Reich cabinet, the Gestapo, the SS, with its hundreds of thousands of members, and the SA brown shirts, whose roles numbered above four and a half million. With harsh irony, the city of Nuremberg, the mystic home place of Nazism, was picked as the trial's location. The courthouse was only a mile or so away from the Nuremberg Stadium, where Hitler and Goering and Hess had screamed their defiance of other countries. From this place, and from this day forth, began a new era in the history of the world. The Nuremberg trials are so historic because they established the principle that no person is above the law. In words spoken on that opening day of the cases, 65 years ago today exactly, November 21st, 1945, by the U.S. Chief Prosecutor, Justice Robert Jackson, who declared that the law shall not stop with the punishment of petty crimes by little people. It must also reach men who possess themselves of great power and make deliberate and concerted use of it to set in motion evils that leave no home in the world untouched. The trials at Nuremberg laid the foundation of a system for the enforcement of international criminal law, promising justice for victims of widespread atrocities across the globe. Yet the impact of these trials was hardly inevitable. In his opening statement, Justice Jackson described the tribunal as novel and experimental. And for nearly half a century after the Nuremberg trials, it seemed that the model of justice established here would remain exceptional and singular. But in the early 1990s, as ethnic cleansing was in full rage in Yugoslavia, when innocent men, women, and children were being murdered and raped, the world once again responded to wrongs so calculated so malignant, so devastating, that civilization cannot tolerate their being ignored. To use again those opening words from Justice Jackson's statement. The UN Security Council established an international court, the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. The international community's response was directly inspired by Nuremberg. And indeed, its statutory definition of crimes against humanity came directly, word for word, from the Nuremberg Charter. 100,000 human beings in a period of only 100 days. The natural response was to create an international tribunal to judge the perpetrators. Other international tribunals have followed, such as the Special Court for Sierra Leone and the Extraordinary Chambers of the Courts of Cambodia. And there is now a permanent international criminal court. A court which is focused since it came into full operation in 2003 on cases of mass atrocities against innocent civilians. Cases that the United States, though not a party, supports and to which it urges all states, parties, and non-parties alike to provide cooperation and assistance. The legacy of Nuremberg lives in the international courts of the 21st century, not only in the principle that powerful leaders must be held to account, and in the universal norms established here and now set forth in their statutes, but the words and the work of the lawyers and judges that served in this palace of justice serve us still. I can say from my own experience as a prosecutor in two of these later tribunals, that one could hardly begin a trial without reviewing again the eloquent statements delivered by the prosecutors in opening their historic cases. The decisions of the judges are applied directly to current questions. 
I recall in the trial of the leaders of what was called the hate media of Rwanda, a case I led in Arusha. Nothing was as persuasive in determining what speech crossed the line into criminality as the analysis of the judges here who distinguished the cases of the two men who were tried for incitement through the Nazi media in their decision to condemn Julius Streicher and to acquit Hans Fritsch. We have also learned important lessons from what followed after Nuremberg in Germany itself. Practitioners of international justice today recognize that one of the most enduring legacies of Nuremberg took root when national courts in Germany took up prosecution of Nazis. The lesson taught by this experience is that for international prosecutions to have a lasting and real difference in the daily lives of peoples, they need to be followed by trials in the places where the perpetrators lived, where they can be judged by the people whose humanity they betrayed. This lesson is being followed in the war crimes chamber in Bosnia and in state courts in Serbia and Croatia. It is recognized in the principle of complementarity in the International Criminal Court. It is also important to remember that it was an international effort that achieved justice at Nuremberg and established the legacy of which I have spoken. While we Americans often cite the words of Justice Jackson, he was the U.S. Chief Prosecutor, responsible for leading the arguments on count one of the indictment of the 22 Nazi leaders. He was joined by U.K. Chief Prosecutor Sir Hartley Shawcross, by USSR Chief Prosecutor General R. A. Redenko, and by French Chief Prosecutor Francois Mendel who had the lead on counts two, three, and four, respectively. The historic judgment issued on October 1st, 1946, bore the imprint of contributions of judges from these four countries, each drawn from very different legal traditions. That experience teaches us how much can be established when nations work together for a common objective. The world is very different now, but cooperation remains of paramount importance. In that regard, it is great to see the ever closer relationship that is developed between Russia and NATO, as shown by the participation of President Nevada at the NATO summit this very weekend, and the partnership and agreements that the Foreign Minister described. It was the common effort of great nations that made possible the achievement of justice at Nuremberg. It is through similar common efforts of nations that justice can be achieved for the victims of mass atrocities everywhere.